Hey, Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless. This is Captain Ashanel with 15 minutes with the Captain. And today, my reader is Soldier Ash, bro. Right, all praises to the Most High. So today, we are going into the topic of can sinners repent? Can the gangbangers, the the drug dealers, the prostitutes, all of these um, sinners amongst our people, can they repent according to the Bible? So let's start off with Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 the book of second corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17 therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature so if you're in christ you're a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new so this is kind of clear cut this kind of answers the question from the start so you come into christ you realize you're an israelite you hear the scriptures, you hear Deuteronomy 28, you hear all of these wonderful things of the Bible, and you say, do you know what, now I need to change, so I'm going to change. So, what we've just read here says that all the old things we've done, so whether you were gangbanging, you were um, on a pole dancing, you were, you were, you were selling drugs, you, were, you was a hitman, you name it, you know, you can repent. And new things now are considered in the eyes of the Lord. All old things are done away with. Now, um, from there, from there, let's go to um, the book of Titus. Let's go to the book of Titus. So now you're a new creature. You, you hear the truth. You know, the beautiful um, knowledge of the truth comes to, comes to your um, understanding. Now, Titus 3 and verse um, 3. The book of Titus, chapter 3 and verse 3. So now we're reflecting back on our old lives. Read that. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. So we all can relate to this. Coming into this truth, we can all relate to this. You know, we were sometimes at some point in past times, foolish, we were stupid, we were disobedient, we were deceived, we were um, serving diverse lusts, a whole manner of lusts and um, pleasures, living in malice, envy, hatefulness, and we hated one another. We specialize in hating one another. Black people love to hate one another. So you read the scriptures and you start to identify that, hold on, this was me. This was, me. before I came into the truth, this is how I was. You understand? So now, we read in Second Corinthians 5, now I'm becoming a new creature. Now it's about repentance. Now it's about me changing my life, understanding who I am. I don't want to be a homemonger no more. I don't want to sell drugs. I don't want to be um, um, prostituting. I don't want to be, you know, all of these wicked things we used to do. I don't want to do it no more. Now, um, what version? That was the end of verse 3. Okay, read verse 4. Verse 4. But after that, the kindness and love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. So now we, we, we understand, okay, the Lord is actually dealing with us. All the stuff we heard about in church and all these different um, institutions, these false institutions, was not true. It wasn't true. So now we truly understand Christ was a black man from the tribe of Judah. He's our forefather. We've got the same blood. So now we know he's dealing with us on a certain level. So now our minds start to change. Our minds change. Now we delve deeper into the Bible. Now, um, Acts. So can gangbangers, drug dealers, prostitutes, whoremongers, all of these um, type of people, can they repent? That's the question, the million dollar question. Okay, Acts 17 and... Um, Uh, read 30. The book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 30. And the times of this ignorance, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Read it one more time for them. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So there was a time when we was um, drug dealing, gang banging, we were prostituting, we were, um, you know, you name it, all the wickedness under the sun we used to do. There was a time, it says here, where God winked at that. He let it slide. He said, you know what, I could judge you, but I'm just going to let it slide. Why? Because I know 
your time is going to come for repentance or the opportunity to repent. Um, it says, but now he's commanded all men to repent. So now we come into this truth. The stakes get higher. You realize that, do you know what? The Lord could have put me to death all them years ago, but he kept me alive. He, he preserved me. Now I'm coming to the truth. I have now to repent. Okay, that's something we all need to adapt to and realize that, you know, the things I was doing before need to stop. Now, so some may look at it and think, oh, I'm so used to it. All I've known is the streets. I've been in the streets for the past 20 years. I've been prostituting for the past 20 years. Prostitution pays my rent. You know, selling my behind or dancing on a pole is what pays me. It's what feeds me. Selling um, um, drugs is what feeds me, it what clothes me, it feeds my kids. How can I stop? Now, go to First um, Corinthians, because that is the common, um, what's the word I want to use? That's the common thought. You know, when you've been in a lifestyle for so long, you probably think that, you know, I can't, I can't get out of it. Now, Read verse 12, or 10, and 10 and 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. We're going to start there. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. So that's a warning. You know, always take heed. Always have righteous brothers and sisters around you to protect you from falling. We don't. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. So, brothers and sisters, you know, coming out of the lifestyles we live, you may think that it's too difficult. It's too, I can't stop selling drugs. I can't get off the pole. I can't stop selling my behind. I need this. I need that. But there's no temptation that isn't common. It's all common to man. Keep going. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. So the Lord's saying that all these temptations he's putting on us, he knows he's not allowing us to be um, at, at a stage or a level where we cannot handle what he puts in front of us. So we know, for example, the drug dealing, the, 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 the pole dancing, the prostitution. The Lord says, I can, I can stop that. I can, I can help you stop that. I can... I put, I put it in your spirit to be able to handle that and stop. You don't feel you can't stop. You can stop. The Lord says it here. Read that bit again. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Lord always gives us an exit route. He always gives us an exit route out of these sins. So you don't have to be um, drug dealing. You don't have to be um, gang banging. You don't have to be um, selling your behind or doing whatever wickedness, evil, sin that you know, you're into. You don't have to do it. The Lord says there's always a way to escape. There's always a way to escape. And, you know, like we read, read verse 12 again. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. So, take heed lest you fall. So, have righteous and righteous brothers and sisters around you. That is what is going to help you get through. Have righteous and brothers and sisters around you. Yeah? So now, let's jump to Acts. Uh, mm -mm, chapter 8, and let's read verse, let's read about our forefather, Paul, you know, because he had that reputation, he, he had, he had a street reputation, and back in those days, if you fast forward it today, you could say he had the street credibility for being, what word should we use? He was, he was a persecutor, more than a bounty hunter, he was actually shedding blood. He was shedding serious blood, so he had a reputation for doing that. So we're going to read about him. Our forefather, Paul, who was called Saul, originally. Now read verse 3. The book of Acts, chapter 8 and verse 3. So we're going to see 
as wicked as Paul or Saul was, did he repent? Could he repent? Or was it too much? Or was he too into that lifestyle to turn back? As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. You see? So he was causing havoc. Now, this is a real street dude we're talking about here. He was on, up and down the streets causing havoc, you know, entering into houses. He was getting into houses, hailing men and women, uh, hauling them, was joining them in. You understand? And putting them in prison. He was no joke. Now, in fact, let me see, let me see, let me see if that's what I wanted. Um, mm -mm -mm. Jump to, go back to chapter 7. Read verse 58, sorry. Acts chapter 7 and verse 58. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So this is when Stephen got stoned for standing up for righteousness. He got stoned and killed for standing up for righteousness. Saul was there. He was a witness to it. You understand? He, he, he was in um, cahoots, if that's the word I want to use. He was in agreement with this taking place. You understand? So Saul, he, he was about persecuting the men of the Lord. The same way you look at today. You watch the camp videos out there. You see, um, you see us teaching out on the streets. And you see um, brothers and sisters coming up wanting to fight. Mm -hmm. In fact, some wanting to put us to death for just trying to correct them for the sin they're in. Paul was the same way. Paul, Paul, but Paul was actually doing it. He was getting hands-on. Paul was hands-on. Now, um, what verse are you in? That's the end of 59. Okay, let's um, jump back to verse uh, d -d 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 3. 8 and 3. Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Okay, jump to chapter 9, read verse 1. Let's read more. Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. You see? Read on. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. So he was a hunter. He was hunting. He was hunting his people. He was seriously hunting down his people. You understand? The righteous men and women. He weren't playing with them. Read on. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. So the Lord reached out to him. So the Lord put the spirit on, on Saul to bring him into the light, to bring him into the truth of who he was and who his people are. To give him understanding of what was required of him. The Lord approached him, put the spirit on him. The same way you see, you see um, coming into this truth, you see brothers and sisters that came from that type of lifestyle. Drug dealing, gang banging, um, stripping, prostituting, you know, all types of um, backgrounds. The Most High is the same way he woke up Saul, the same way he's waking up our brothers and sisters across the world, all across the globe. You understand? Now, what verse are you in? That was the end of five. Okay, read six. Verse six. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. So now the Lord is using him. Now the Lord is giving him a mission. This is what I want you to do for me. Now jump down to verse 13. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints so, at Jerusalem. So the Lord told Ananias to go and look for, um, for Paul for Saul. And... Um, he said, Lord, I've heard how evil this dude is. He's evil. Read on. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. So they, they, the priests have given him the chief priests 
have given him authority to bound up anyone that calls the name of Jesus. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And that's something you brothers and sisters need to learn and understand, that although you're coming from this background of gangbanging, drug dealing, prostitution, fraud, what else is there? Um, you know what I'm talking about. There's a whole load of things. Do you think of anything? Um, murder, hatred. Murder, hatred. Um, you know, all these type of wicked things we do as a people. Although we're coming from that background into this truth. Read that verse again you just read. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel that's, unto me. That's what you need to understand. Although you're coming from this background, the Lord still identifies you as a chosen vessel vessel unto him so don't feel ashamed or embarrassed at your background that you know i'm too unclean to come into this or to to, to be um, a vessel of the lord no you understand the lord the same way he picked um saul out of the gutter he's doing it with us all in this truth today now what verse you in 15 still to bear my name before the gentiles and kings and the children of israel for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. So Paul suffered, or Saul suffered great things for the Lord's namesake. sake. Now, we're going to get an example of what he suffered. Now, jump to Acts um, 16. Right, we're nearly done. Acts 16 and read verse 22, uh, I think it is. Let's see that. Read 22. The book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. So, clothes ripped off and they were getting beaten. Read on. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. You see? So they were beaten, many stripes. Not only that, they were thrown into prison. Charging the jailer to keep them safely. You see? charging the jailers to keep them safely. So this is the persecution Paul went through. You understand? His faith grew so strong that he put his body on the line for Christ. Keep going. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Okay, so you could. there's many stories when you read through Paul's writings of what he went through, the persecution, the beatings, the prison, imprisonment. You know, so he, he put his life on the line. Now, um, let's go to Revelation 20 now. Revelation 22. Uh, read verse um, 15. The book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 15. Um, mm, 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 mm. Yep. Verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So, read 14. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So, this is how we get the kingdom, brothers and sisters. So, in your repentance, in your, your turning away from your um, evil, wicked lifestyle, the commandments are what we turn to. The commandments are what we have to turn to. So, um, Lord's will, you got some edification on that. We will be back again, Lord's will, for another part of 50 Minutes with the Captain. This is uh, Captain Nationnel from IUIC. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. 
IUIC, we deliver the truth.